So, I need to make another video. <coughs> it's the second time that this happened to me. Um, I made a video, and for some odd reason, the sound just boop, disappeared. So, I took out my, my camcorder. So, I, I had it in the storage, and I don't use it that often. But because of what's been transpiring, I thought, well, hey, pull out the old camcorder. It's a little tiny thing, but um, it works. So this is the hat that I made. I need to get a pom-pom. Um, I do know how to make pom-poms, but I haven't made one in a while. It's been a long, it's been a while. So I'm going to, um, first thing I need to do, I put my magnifying glasses down, and then I couldn't find them. So now I found them. I also have another pair. These are from 1982. They're my Calvin Klein glasses. And this is before I ever had bifocals, way back in 1982 when I used to live in Sacramento, California. And I bought these. They're Ralph Lauren. And back then, they were super expensive. So I need to... Just double checking with my. I can't tell where my sound. There it is. Um, I don't want to go too loud, and I don't want to go too low. Just a little bit, and I just dropped my. <coughs> These are little rubber made. Um, Okay. Your device comes with built-in options to protect your files. Choose the one that best. Um, I'm not going to do anything right now. This is like rubber made. You place it in your liner or your shelf unit. But I like to have these to place my glasses on. This protects them from getting scratched. Because I've had these glasses since 1982. And I just got this. I noticed this little tiny scratch. I didn't have it before because I always put my glasses in cases. And I was looking at him. It's, it's most likely because my, my vision is getting really good that I noticed. Imagine 1982. Um, we're in the year 2022. So, let's see. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 12. Um, just double checking my, my math. Forty years ago, I had these Ralph Lauren glasses. Did I say Calvin Klein? I used to have a pair of Calvin Klein, but for some reason I lost them. Um, but I have my Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lauren glasses. And way back in 82, when I lived in Sacramento, um, I had a very good job at college. And I was making good money, so I bought these. Um, and it was quite expensive back in the days. I don't know how much they are now. They're probably two hundred dollars, a little less, but that's still expensive for just the frames because these are just the frames. I and the prescription and everything else, just a simple prescription. Like I said, I did not have um, bifocals at that time. These are without bifocals, so my vision four years ago was much better. I mean, for wearing glasses. These are really thin, I mean super thin glass, and as the years progress, um, those 40 years to this year, my eyesight started changing. So I take care of everything, specifically my glasses. So I pulled them out of my storage unit because I have certain things in my storage unit. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go to the doctor if I need to have a pair of glasses because of my one eye which has the optic neuritis and um, my ret retinal is damaged, I'm going to ask the doctor that if I need to have prescription in one eye and the other eye doesn't need that much prescription, can they put the prescription in there? So I put them on and to my amazement, I, I don't even need these magnifying glasses. See these magnifying glasses? I'll show you how much they magnify. Look at that. That is magnifying. Woohoo! Now I'm going to take these off and I'm going to show you how no magnifying. See how different that is? 
These are not magnifying. There's no bifocals or nothing. The magnifying glasses. See that? Wow. And these don't have any color in it. These were um, two-tone. You see that green? Beautiful. Turquoise. Tortoise and, tur and green. And I love these colors. I just love them. And they're awfully beautiful. And to think that I can see here without having to wear the magnifying glass, which is like super powerful. These are so powerful. They were giving me a headache. So I said, oh my God, I forgot. I have, I have them in my Chanel case. I have a <coughs> Chanel a case because I used to have a pair of Chanel glasses. Um, and those, I don't know what, I guess I lost them in transition. <laughs> so I don't know what happened to my Chanel shape. So here's the hat that I made. And I noticed that on YouTube, I, I heard my sound, and then all of a sudden the sound just disappeared. This is the second time I made a video, and it's happened to me. So, like I said, I got my, my mini camcorder out. It's broken, but it works. That's the whole point. It works. So I'm going to get my little chair and my back up here because my neck and knees are super swollen today. Seriously. I mean, whoa. I, I this is super swollen because I was on my knees uh, looking for something and now it's bubbled up here. This one is like that. But this one went into complete smooth swollen mode. It's kind of hard to wear pants when your legs hurt. So I'm going to back out over here. Oops! Out of my chilly little toy. This is our sweet little cupcake. Swirl around again. I'm going to make sure that I have everything my yarn, my scissors, um, everything I need to show you the process. And you can see how. This leg is really thin, and this leg is super swollen. It's just totally different. So I'm going to get up. Oh, hold on. And I have really tiny legs down here. These legs can break real, real easy. I have very thin bones, so I'll be right back. I forgot something. There it is. This is my coin. Okay, so we've got... Everything we need here. I've got the yarn that I'm going to use. I've got my my tuck stitch. Let's see. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if you can see it. But there's twelve rows. Twelve rows. And I think it's the let me see. I've got my curtains all oh, there it is. There it is. Got my curtains. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if you can see this. There's twelve rows. And kinda of hard to see. What is going on here? Well anyway. On this chart that I created, there's 12 rows, and I have them color coordinated, color B, color A, color B, and color A. Color A is the tuck, color B is the stockinette, color A is the tuck, color B is the stockinette. So there's 8 columns across this way and 12 rows going this way. Okay. And by all means, make a, ch a chart. Here's a blank one. I have it on my computer, and when I need it, I just I make copies of it on my computer, make a few sheets. So if I'm going to use my needle beetle or whatever tool I'm using to create my tuck stitch, I can just go ahead and add the dots or whatever I'm using. So let me put this in the right manner. And it's right here. So I can see what it is I'm doing. You're going to need some weight because I'm going to make another hat. So this is called a yarn rod. 
that came with the LK150. Okay? Now, I don't know if I... If my phone is ringing... Da, 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 da. Let's see. Aww. Aww. Let's see. really nice, wonderful family member that just texted me and gave me the most awesome comment that anybody can give me. Okay, so let's get back over here and let's get this party started. Alrighty, so let's take a look. Oops, wrong way. Wrong way. I'm trying to make all this beautiful light possible so you can see the needles that I'm going to be selecting um, let me know if that's a wee bit too much because this camera is super super old yeah I got it way back in let me see I think I got it in I don't remember I think 2010, because this camera, it, there's really no way to adjust the 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 light. Okay, with the light, without the light. Okay, that's probably as good as it's gonna get. Okay, we're going to need our needle selectors our prong, our um, transfer tube tool, and it's also called a prong, transfer prong. And you're going to need your 3-1 side. We're going to use this 3-1. 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3. Okay? So we're going to need those. You're going to need your claw weight or some type of weight to hold that yarn down. Um, I do, I do have a needle beetle that I can use. For the, this is specifically made for this type of machine. Okay, and you're going to need something to hold your clip, or at least your your um, what you're working on. And you're going to need two different containers for your yarn because you're going to be moving one yarn one way and then one yarn the other way and i say these these are good with cashews but let me tell you they were delicious but see you can see if you're running out of yarn then i have this other lower um, container it's for plants but i am you know, and you can use it for other things you can put your tools in here whatever you want and you could glasses or whatever your scissors but i also have a weight in here to hold this from moving around and I am going to play yarn A is going to be in one container, yarn B is going to be in another container. Yarn B is the one that uses less yarn, yarn A is the one that uses more yarn because you're going to do four tuck stitches. Okay, so let's take a look. Oh, somehow I took a picture and I didn't want to take a picture, but I took a picture. So, okay. That's my other lamp that I'm going, I, may, I may need to use. I'm not too sure yet, but let me just turn this one off. I'm going to turn that off. Okay, so I'm going to roll this one here. Thank you. 
maybe that might work a little bit. The yarn we're going to be using, of course, my wheelchair. Oh, wheelchair. Thank God I have it. Okay. So, let's see. Again, I have my chart. Oh, you can see that better now. See, this is the blank side that has rows, only eight rows and eight squares. This is the side that has the 12 rows and the eight columns. And how I traced this was on a graph paper. And you could buy that anywhere at a, um, what do you call it, Office Depot. So purchase some graph paper. They have a lot of lines in them. Again, I'm going to set that right there so I can see it and have it upside down. Which is a little okay. Your carriage, this is the carriage that does all the work for you. It has a number one and two. So you can add two yarns if you have really thin yarn. Which that is called plating. That is a whole different other video. So if you notice on the side, there is Russell levels one and two. So we're going to leave these in two for right now on both sides. And both sides have the same thing. There's a triangle and then a dot. The dot is for intarsia, and that's a different video. So for right now, we're going to have the bottom level facing toward you, and you're going to have the other level facing, the top level facing away from you. So let's put that on the carriage. And the next thing we're going to do, and by the way, I'm not going to use my needle beetle because I want to use my my hands to manipulate this. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the three let me see if that helps. Oh no, now put this away. Really bad lighting. <laughs> I'm really apologize that my my camera there. I think that's a little, little bit better. That's for sure. So we're going to take our I think that made a big difference, did it? Let's see. Not really. Maybe I'll just turn it off altogether. That didn't do anything anyway. So make sure all our needles is in the non-working position. And on this end, there's a zero, and that goes um, up to. Let's see. I need my light. Goes up to let's see, 60, 65, 70, 75, and then from zero to this end, it goes. To but we're going to be using 49 needles. So let me bring my light close up to me, and we're going to select with the one three. And then here we're going to go one two three. Select those. And nope, I made a boo boo. Okay, let's take this back. We want to select the bottom portion, the three, three one. So let's go right in the middle. There we go. Three one. Oops, I made a Google. Let's put that back. Catch those mistakes before they happen. Three one. Three one. Only going to be using 40, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. So let's take these and put those back. And we're going to use 40. 
forty nine for this particular beam. And you're going to have two at the end, not to wear them, to wear it so Okay. And then again, we're going to skip that one because we've already selected that. Okay. Skip one. So it's one. One, two, three. One, two, three. And two, three. Maybe you can just place this light on it. Okay, so there's more light than I need, but that's okay. Okay, so there's 40, um, 45, 40, 45, 46, 47, 48, and 49. There it is, that's 49. That's more than 49, but we need these two at the end, just to let you know. So you're going to need, let's see, 50, 50, no, let's see, that one back. Let's be on the face right and use the 40, 49 needles. So I'd rather be facing, sorry, 45, 46, 47, 48, and 49. Not 49 total on each side. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is what they call an e wrap. I really miss my other camera because that one is a very expensive camera that I threw away and that had zoom and all this other good stuff. So let's get our yarn out. We are going to look in our beautiful bag here. I got plenty of them. So now look in yarn that you're going to be able to see. There's some beautiful. Oh, that's too far. You're not going to be able to see that. You're not going to be able to see that. out in case I run out of yarn. For whatever reason, in case I run out of yarn. I don't have any other thing. Okay. Just in case I run out of green, I'll use that. Okay. Okay, so we selected our yarn. Oh, 
and yarn it out that way. So this is the yarn we're not going to use that much. We're only going to use that to make two rows. So let's get that yarn. And you can see what I'm doing when you're not in the then what is she doing? This comes with a high side lift. So you want to go underneath that. That's her like that. Go over the tension guide. There's two of them. One for one color and you see the other color. Then there's another high lift. And you go from behind. Like that. One, two, three, and here's the tension spring, and that goes from behind. So we've got that one, and then this is the yarn holder here. So while you've got that all hooked up, let's get our next yarn. I'm going to start with this really pretty baby yellow. And again, I, I've shown you how to. Put that inside your yarn. Again, you need to go under, over that tension knot, and then do another eyelet. You need to get your tension guide rod and you can put that on hold. Okay. And this yarn is pretty thin. Ouch. I, I tend to get it. This yarn is very thin, so let's turn it off. Make it a little easier for me to go through. So the first thing you want to do is these are your needles. You want to take that one yarn that was in the hole that you set on the, on the tension rod. Here it is. Take your yarn and do a D wrap counterclockwise on each and every needle. I've got my first one. I'm going to get a strawberry weight. The first thing is the weight. You see how they're holding that yarn down. Let's get that out. And I'm going to e wrap with like a E clockwise, a counterclockwise. And I use my finger just to hold it so I don't give it a whole bunch of tension. I don't want to go tight. You want to use the, the hat. You want the hat to be very comfortable. And when you let go, it bounces up anyway. So you can go all of like that, all the way around. And because I like to show you from the beginning to the end, and I'm not going to pause it and say, okay, so we're at the other end. I'm a very visual person. I have to see what's going on. YouTube has this really nice button that you can slow down your, your, your video once you complete it and you upload it. And see how quickly, once you learn how to do this, don't be intimidated by the machine. If you bought one and it's been sitting in the closet because you felt intimidated, because either the needles were too small or you just couldn't find that right person to teach you stuff like that. That's the whole thing. Is find somebody who can teach you and show you stuff like that without interruption, without pauses, without. Because um, I know in a lot of videos you watch, they pause it because they made a mistake and then they start. Neither did you get where they were at, and you only show you partial of what you're doing because, of course, it's a monetary uh, fight when you want to make money. I'm not getting paid for this. I'm doing this, and this is what I love to do. And I keep saying I'm going to get a nail and out of here, but I haven't. I've been so busy enjoying my knitting machine. So here we are. We got all our needles threaded. They're all threaded. They're ready to go. And I have to take off my 
Number, let me get my When I get to 35, I'm going to stop. I can pause this because I can. Because you're not going to want to see me go 35. So here we go. The first one is always the hardest. Always. It, it is one of the hardest things to do the very first take around. So let me get some lotion. I'm going to show you something because this is super thick, four ways to dry. I'm going to move all my moves forward. I'm just going to take the ease out of pushing it through. going to be needing this and your other tools. I'm letting you know right now. So let me get my uh, so I can see everything. And the light bulb. Okay. Okay. Right the 
looking at the spirit and making it a song. Get your yarn rod and carefully place it on there. Every other minute. You have an every other needle opening, this, these hooks are going to catch them. Okay, now you can hold this down and it's easier pulling out your needle. There we go. Done. Now bring your carriage over slowly. And we are at row three. Pull that tuggy down a little bit. Because it's a worsted weight yarn. When I can afford a chunky knitting machine, I'm going to do it. Okay. Remember the ones that we're not using right now, stay in the back. And now that wax is starting to go in now in the carriage. We are not looking at the chart right now, if you're wondering. So when are we going to get to the chart? Not here. This is mine. And notice I'm holding this down so my yarn doesn't jump off the needle. And we are at 10. Okay. That's 10. And we've still got 20 more rows to go. Pull this out. So I, I gave you the gist of that one. And I'm just looking at everything. Everything looks good. So what I'm going to do is pause this camera. And I'm going to be back till I get to row 20. And you don't want to see me do this over and over again. So pause it. Okay, we're at row 30. This is what 30 rows look like. So, the next step is I have my carriage on the right, and I'm going to pull all these little portions. Because when you move your carriage to back to in position, it moves these needles up into position B. And then the non working needles are in the back. So what we need to do is because we need this fold that is like on this particular beam. Here's the fold. And look at that beautiful edging it has all the way across. Beautiful, beautiful edging. So if you were to flip your head up, you're not going to see thickness or boldness is going to look really nice. So that's the next step. Okay? So I'm going to put my hat back on. See, see how you don't see the, the seam is seamless? Now, the stitch that I created, and you can follow along, has three rows of ribbing. And then there's an empty space because it's every other needle. So to create this, when you look at the bottom of your, your project, there's going to be these three rows and a loose loop. So let's, let's do that. So in order for us to do that, we need to remove the weight. Let me see. And let's go down here. Here we go. I can see that a little bit. I'm going to remove the weight on this end. I can remove this weight as well. 
put this one away. Here's where you need your transfer tool. It has the one point on the top. And just to hold it, we're going to place one of these on here. Just to hold it. But now we're looking for there's an empty space here, and then there's that three rows of mock ribbing. We're going to find that loose, loose, that one loop, and we're going to place it in every other stitch that we didn't use. So here's that loop. I'm going to look for that needle that I didn't use that was in the back. Notice it's coming forward. Going into the next three. Find that loop. Let's see, it's over here somewhere. There it is. It's holding it. I don't know if it's holding it. There it is. I'm going to find that needle that I haven't used. Place that in there. Now you want to add some weight so the bows don't come off. So here's one, two, three. Here's the, the one loop that's right, that, that's not been used. I'm going to put that in there. That needle. One, two, three. There's the next one. That's the needle. We're looking for that. Knitted stitch, one, two, three. And then there's that real big loop. Needle that is way in the back. Start adding weights so this doesn't jump off. One, two, three. Use that. Use fishing all those needles. There's that needle that we're going to use. This one over here. See it? But here's the needle we're going to use the one that's in the back. The light back here. So you can see what I'm doing. Here's the knitted. One, two, three. We're not going to use those. We're going to find that one loop. That's empty. Take a look. It has to roll under. Put it roll around it. Add it to that. that empty that needle that you're not using. You need to add that one loop there. One, two, three. Fold over. Over. Keep your stitches from jumping off of the bed or the table. Knit, knit, knit. The loop is empty. So I'm going to do that all the way across and I'll be back.